so beautiful. But it's hard. You know, it's, it's not something you can do like every other day. I mean, you've got to work with it for two hours every night, memorizing vocabulary, like in their screen and hitting people with rumors. <laughs> <laughs> Get up at the board! Because right? that's how I learned. Send us up to the board. He would tell us a sentence to write in Latin. He would write it out in Latin. John, all the Italian one who died for Poor Italy in the hands of. And he'd go, John, translate. I go, poor Italy, poor Italy in the hands of thieves. Go, yes! And then he'd go up there and he'd make the corrections, right, so that it made grammatical sense. And then he'd get a different colored piece of chalk because we didn't have markers. And he would mark with red the corrections. Then he would mark with blue if Cicero wrote it. And then he would mark with another color, like green, if Caesar wrote it. This is how Caesar wrote it. It's just absolutely amazing. Right? That's what I got excited about. It's amazing. It's boring. <laughs> Yes. What's your best memory of Baker? Uh, oh, oh man, that is not fair. Uh, I, uh, I'm going to wish out and say it's yet to happen. I have so many memories. I actually, you know, I thought this thing was going to be an hour and twenty minutes. I really thought this thing was going to be an hour and twenty minutes because I was just like so, you know, the way that I'd written. I mean, there's 28 slides, and if you've been in class with me, I spent 50 minutes on four slides. <laughs> and reading it was, you know, part of it because, uh, you know, I knew I was reading it rather than talking to you, but that's my fault. Um, patient memory. No, it was awesome, <laughs> uh, but that's not Baker. I, uh, I, I can tell you one thing. Um, I have a, a student who's now, she graduated in 2001. She was the first person my, uh, my first year here. She came in as a freshman, and she was like, I'm going to major in history. Wow. Right, so, you know, she was in my <coughs> She, um, uh, when I got here, I was told explicit to be, explicitly to be very, very tough because um, the reputation of the history department was uh, not so rough. And it was kind of viewed as, a, well, there weren't any majors, and it was viewed as a kind of easy thing. So I didn't come here you know, to, to create a department that was easy. I came here to create a department that people got excited about because there were people out there My job is just to show them that you can actually do something with it. And it's not just about teaching. Teaching is the noblest of professions. <laughs> um, and when I, <laughs> she was a sophomore, I made sure people understood that you do not be, you, you cannot be late now. I'm like, people drive over me like, like <coughs> tanks, but I'm like, do not be late with your paper. And I told them that I have a paper shredder in my office. And I put it by the door. And when you insert the paper under my door after 5 o'clock, it will be shredded. <laughs> this was so neat. It's 502. Big papers do. Right? Boom! I hear the door slam. Right? Paper comes up uh, to the door. I have a vacuum cleaner. No. <laughs>
it's, there's just so many of them. Uh, there was a section in the PowerPoint where I had a, you know pictures and lists of people that you know I, uh, I had the honor of knowing here. And uh, I was like, oh, this is going to be forever. So I actually pulled that section out. But um, when I got here, This is not an Ivy League school. You're not going to turn this into an Ivy League school. Stop assigning so much work. Stop assigning so much. I'm, I'm not kidding. I had students in class getting in my face. I actually had the vice president of admissions, who was not here, it was a long time, send a, an email to the dean, CCing my chair, saying, this man is too difficult. We really need to rethink the hire. Right? I have a copy of that. I'm very proud. <laughs> at this school has changed slowly but steadily and I think that you know, this last year and a half right and this goes to the seniors too because you know you could have given ground we've achieved nerd critical mass <laughs> right which is this is a good place to learn and I'm excited about learning and I don't care what other people think about me in my pursuit of my education I just don't care because that's far more important to me than anything else. And the reason why I stayed in this, prof this profession is because it's so empowering to understand what you can do with your mind. I mean, it's just so empowering. I mean, I'm, it's weird. You hit 22, 23, you don't drink as much beer after that, but <laughs> You're basically the same person. I'm still the nine-year-old, well, 22-year-old I was. Uh, I'm just slower and deafer, and my vision's not, not so good, and my teeth are getting bad, and all those kinds of things. But I still am doing what I was doing when I hit that age. And it's, you know, it's not something Same year, I'm the one in Missouri. Same year. I mean, it was like, it's Baker. Um, but that doesn't happen because of me. I'm kind of the midwife. <laughs> I'm serious. I do everything that I can to make sure that these things happen, but I cannot make it happen unless you're willing to do it. That's why I'm so patient. Yes. If you were a soldier in an ancient army, whose army would it be? <laughs> I was a soldier in many ancient armies that died in every one. Uh, I don't want to live at any other moment in time than right now. The, his, the past is a horrible, horrible place. <laughs> For everybody but the elite 92% of those societies. And my luck is that isn't going to happen. So I don't want to. I'm very romantic about the past, uh, but like I said, the thing that interests me 
most in history is um, the people who, who endured. Right? And if you think about that, you know, from the perspective of losing, right? <laughs> it's the people who confront adversity that are responsible for so much of development. That's inspiring, especially when you see it happening again and again and again historically. It's also a lot of fun. So, yeah, I mean, I, that was a big part of my childhood. You know, I was like, oh, if I'd only been in the French unit in the Battle of Waterloo or Gettysburg, then I learned more. <laughs> Just like, mm. All right. Uh, I have profound. Insane women taking Athenian Greek history, classical Greek history. And we were talking about the Spartans who were, uh, you've seen 300, fabulously good looking men. <laughs> and, uh, but we were talking about the Spartans and the Spartan Constitution and the organization of Spartan society and so forth. And they just kept going on. And I'm like, oh my God, what time was it? We were 21 minutes over. 21 minutes over, and nobody had noticed. And I slapped the table, I went, I win. <laughs> <laughs> no one had noticed. It was just absolutely amazing because we were so involved in the discussion. And I mean, the reason for that is because the, the four students in there were just, they were nuts. <laughs> it was just absolutely unbelievable to have that kind of experience. And it was like, can we read more about the Spartans? And I'm like, no. Of course you can read more. So we actually ordered some other books, put them on reserve, and started looking at the Spartan Constitution. And in particular, because there were four women in the class, we started looking at the Spartan treatment of women, which is very different from the other city-states class. So, that's very good. That's got to be my favorite part of the memory, other than Sorry? If you could pick one professor to do this next, would it be in line? One professor? To do this the last lecture next. Oh! 